Welcome everyone back to another video on the channel, my final video before the AFL National Draft and today I'm going to be doing a full preview of St Kilda's position in the draft. Uh, we obviously have a very prominent hand of pick 7, 8, 32, 47, 80 and 88 and Cal Toomey's draft came out la uh, last night and he has us taking Toby Trevalia and Alex Tyru. I will talk a bit more about that a bit later. Um, I talked about it in uh, detail in yesterday's video, so make sure to watch that if you are yet to do so. But without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So I want to start by talking about the current state of the list in terms of list spots. So we originally had nine list spots post trade period. We signed Jack Carroll, which means eight list spots. And we have committed to re-rookieing Brad Crouch, which would result in seven remaining list spots. But let's just assume, well, that hasn't happened yet. So let's just assume we have eight list spots. So we have three academy slash father-son picks in uh, Adrian Cole, Lennox Hoffman, and Elwood Peckett. I think Hoffman and Cole are almost guaranteed to get to us unless they go ridiculously high for some reason. But... Um, I think bids will, for them will come around the 30s to 40s range, including Hoffman, who has bolted up the draft order after um, a really strong grand final performance for the Sandringham Dragons as an intercept defender. So I think clubs are kind of seeing his um, athletic base and think that he's going to be a very promising but raw prospect for the future. So he has climbed a bit. Um, which is unfortunate for us, but you know what can we do? We're St Kilda, we get cursed in every single way. So Cole Hoffman Peckett taken from the Academy and Father Son. Um, we are also, I guess, binded to taking a Sandringham rookie, but there have been recent reports that um, those Academy Father Son kids do count as the Sandy rookie since they played for Sandringham during the year. Um, there have been contradicting reports, like some people are saying it doesn't count and other people are saying it does count. So. I guess we'll just have to see on draft night what happens but I'm going to assume that with the most recent report it is correct and that is that um, the academy kids count so um, let's just assume hypothetically that Cole counts as the Sandy rookie and that leaves us five list spots remaining so we um, obviously take Crouch that gives us four and that leaves us with picks 7, 8, 32, 47 and um, Eddie and 88 to match Cole and Hoffman um, so they will be absorbed so um, our live picks I think 47 will be used to match one of their bids as well so our live picks will end up being 7, 8 and 32 even 32 is a bit risky because um, a bid for either of those guys could come in before 32 is very close so I guess the club might consider live trading. So I think we're in the position now where assuming Crouch, Hoffman, Cole and Peckett but all get to St Kilda, I think we'll take four uh, live picks. So I think three in the national draft and one in the rookie draft. The rookie draft pick will probably be a Ruckman. So we've been linked to a Harry Boyd from Norwood in the Sandfall and then Lachlan Blackiston from Western Australia. So those are two guys or two mature aged Ruckman who we might select to try and kind of support Max Heath and Ron Marshall. Um, a lot of people think that we should just back Max Heath in, but I mean, we can do that and we can also recruit the backup Ruckman because if, you know, things don't work out with Heath and then Ron gets injured, like what are we going to do? It's silly list management to not try and get a third Ruckman in. You can back in Heath, but you know, you can't rely on him completely given he's unproven and anything could happen to both of our Ruckman. We saw that with Collingwood last season. They had like four Ruckman on the list and all of them got injured. So if we only have two genuine Ruckman and then Keeler as the third, we're going to be in a really precarious position if both of them get injured. So given the circumstances, I think we could look at pick swapping. So Kaltumi did report Trevalia and Taru, but he didn't rule out us splitting pick eight. Um, he actually like said it with a lot of interest so I think that's something we will consider the thing is if we take Taru with pick 7 um, one of our targets if we split pick 8 in my head would have been Luke Trainer, but it doesn't really make much sense to take Trainer if we take Taru so 
that does make it a bit more of a weirder situation considering most of the players around um, the range of the picks we get if we split are key forwards and key defenders so um, after taking Taru it does make it a bit more of a tough decision what we do there so I guess that's why Toomey is saying it's more likely that we just keep the picks. So yeah, 7, 8, 32 and a rookie to fill in the last four spots of the list. Pick 32, I think Dubok Shul, Jasper Alga are uh, both in the frame. James Barrett as well as a kind of a utility if we don't get Taru. Um, and there was that Swans Academy guy. I've never heard of him before, so I have no clue that... Uh, to me reported that we're interested in other players we are interested in are the top six mids so Lola, O'Sullivan, Draper, Jagger Smith, Langford and Smiley and then Bo Allen I think is uh, in serious contention with Trevalia with that pick seven and then I mentioned Luke Trainer, Murphy Reed as well I think as a class C midfielder would be in the frame and then Xavier Lindsay as an outside uh, winger who can eventually move inside as well um, I think he's had really positive meetings with St. Kilda, so he and Trevalia and Allen would be fighting it out for pick seven um, if we don't get one of the top six mids and if Taru is gone. Um, and then Harry Armstrong and Job Shanahan. I think Job Shanahan is an option if we don't get Taru and we split pick eight. So um, that would mean we take you know, either Trevalia or one of the top six mids at seven and then split eight for a teens pick um, and then get Shanahan. Um, I think, yeah, he, he'd only be taken if we don't have the key, key tall taken earlier. Um, and then Armstrong, well, at pick eight, I don't think it's happening. I think we're playing bluff there. So, but yeah, the other guys I think are definitely a chance. There's a wide range of players we're interested in because of how even um, that area of the draft is, especially at pick eight. Um, I think we just got to hope that pick seven, we get one of the top six mids and pick eight is... Um, either split or we get a Lindsay uh, or a Trevalia I think so possible live trades I think consist of mainly eight so eight and then 32 I think it will try to move 32 up um, or even get rid of it to upgrade a different pick because of the risk that Cole and Hoffman could get bid on uh, before that point so a possible trade eight and 32 for 15 16 and 21 um, I think that makes a lot of sense. I don't think Giants will do that though uh, from there end because they're getting rid of three first round picks and I don't think they want to do that. Um, it depends on how highly they rate Trevalia um, and I don't think they rate him that high. So 8 and 32 for 11 and 18 with Richmond could be an option if they want Bo Allen um, after they take Smiley. So that would upgrade our 32 to 18 and downgrade 8 to 11 which um, I think is a really good deal for us if we get one of the top six mids and get trainer 18 and then take another mid at 11. I think that's a really good result for us. Um, and then the other option is to just trade a future first in for a teens pick, um, whether it's 15 or 16 with the Giants or a different team. I don't think any other teams apart from maybe Richmond would consider our future first for a deal. Um, but I think we'd have to see someone slide out for us to trigger this. Um, whether it's Trainer, Shanahan, um, Reed, and I think, as I said before, like it depends on the circumstances of pick seven and eight. Whether we take a tall there, if we do take a tall there, then I don't think Trainer and Shanahan are in the picture. But if we take two mids, then I think they definitely are. So it's very dependent on what happens in top ten without pick. So my prediction for the final draft result in terms of power rankings, I'll put them up on screen right now, and. I, this is not my. This is not a mock draft. It's just how I see St Kilda rating um, each of the players. So I think in that order, we'll try to target players. And in terms of mock drafting, um, I think it ultimately depends on Adelaide and North Melbourne. If North Melbourne take Fino Sullivan, then I think we're very unlikely to get one of the top six mids, which is really unfortunate. Um, if if they do take Taru, then I think Adelaide determine who we get, which is between. Draper and Langford. Whoever they don't take, I think we will get them. Um, so that would ultimately be um, a good result for us if North Melbourne take Taru, because either of those guys I think would be very beneficial for us. And but I think my prediction would be that Adelaide trade up to North Melbourne at pick two. They drop down to pick four. They take Taru at pick four. Adelaide take 
uh, Smith at pick two, and that leaves Draper or Langford to slide down to pick seven. I think that would be Draper in that scenario. So just got to pray that Adelaide trade up um, because if they don't, then we're, we're screwed in terms of getting a top six mid. So we'll just have to see what pans out. So that is the St. Kilda preview of the draft. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to comment your ideal scenario for pick seven and eight, whether you guys want to select two players there or split one of the picks. Um, or you know, keep the picks and then trade in with the future first. Obviously, you've got to keep in mind the um, academy bidding, so where that is projected to come, and then also list spots. So we only have four list spots, um, assuming we take all three of the academy kids and take Brad Crouch as well as a rookie. So uh, we can't load up on first round picks because that's not possible with the restrictions on list sizes. Um, so yeah, make sure to leave a comment about that. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.